Praise the Lord and welcome to Jesus or Muhammad. That's right, it's Pastor Joseph and David Wood. Sam Shimon's not with us today, but uh, the Holy Spirit is right here in the midst of David and Brother Joseph. And you know, today we're going to continue uh, our series on refuting Shabir Ali. He's not here with us. That's all right. We've got his arguments on tape. You want to say anything before we show that first clip, Brother David? Uh, yeah, just that this is, uh, this is one of the central disagreements between Christians and Muslims. For Christians, Jesus' death by crucifixion is one of the three core elements of the Christian gospel. Right. So you look at the book of Acts, you see what message Jesus' followers went out and preached. They always, they always talked about Jesus' uh, divine nature. He is Lord. Uh, he died on the cross for sins, and he rose from the dead. Death, okay. resurrection, deity. Death, yeah. resurrection, deity. That's the core of the Christian <coughs> gospel. Yes. We look at Islam, and Islam agrees with us on a lot of other things. Yeah. Islam agrees with us on things that no one else in the world agrees with us on. So Muslims will tell you Jesus was born of a virgin. Who says yeah. that? Oh, we're so similar. Yeah. yeah. Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus performed miracles. He lived yeah. the most miraculous life in history. Jesus uh, is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. he, Allah raised him to himself. He wouldn't even allow him to die. So Muslims agree with us that Jesus had this miraculous beginning, this miraculous middle, and this miraculous end. Where they disagree with us is on, just happens to be, the three core elements of the Christian gospel. And we're told false prophets, false teachers are going to come and corrupt this message. All right? Right. So here we are refuting Shabir Ali on uh, his contention that Jesus was not crucified. Why don't we show our first clip of the program right now? Uh, in the account of death and resurrection of Jesus, uh, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, what is the difference between... Islam and Christianity, how do they differ in terms of the death and resurrection of Jesus? Uh, let me start with the ascension, okay. because Christians believe that after he died and he resurrected from the dead, he ascended to heaven. Right. Muslims also believe that Jesus ascended into heaven. And uh, many don't realize this because the Quran says, Bal ilai, God, but God raised him to himself, Allahu Aziz and Hakim, and God is mighty and wise. <laughs> so Muslims share with Christians this understanding that Jesus, uh, that Jesus was raised into heaven. Uh, Muslims also believe that Jesus will come again, and, and that is a shared belief with our Christian friends. All right, so there we have it. So, so first off, he wants to start with common ground. Yes, we believe. We believe Jesus in the ascension, and we believe he's coming again. Yeah. And yeah, I'll po I'll point out as far as uh, you know these these uh, lots of the beliefs about Jesus. Muslims agree with us on almost everything except for the core of the Christian <laughs> gospel that are <laughs> that we're told false prophets are going to come along and yeah. corrupt. All the, uh, all the less important stuff, they agree. The really important, essential stuff, complete this. Yeah. In other words, think about think about this. We're told this is, the, this is the core of Jesus' message, death, resurrection, and deity. But be careful, because false prophets are going to come, and they're going to try and corrupt that message, those, those three things, death, resurrection, deity. Watch out, Christians. False prophets are coming to corrupt that. Muhammad comes along. Oh, you Christians believe in God? So do I. You believe in, in prophets? So do I. You believe God has, has sent revelations to the world? So do I. You believe Jesus is born of a virgin? So do I. You believe, you believe that, that Jesus is he ascended to heaven? So do I. You believe he's, he's going to come again? So do I. You believe he performed all these miracles? So do I. You believe he's the Messiah? So do I. We agree on everything except for these three things that you've been told false prophets are going to come along and corrupt. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we can agree on everything. Other than these three things that are the core of Jesus' message, and uh, you've been told false prophets are going to come along and corrupt. And that's what Muslim apologists say day after day, even now. Say, look, we're so similar. You just mm -hmm. got this one few things mm -hmm. wrong. Yep. Are we ready to see the next clip? Uh, sure. So, so he, he's, he's being asked specifically, what are the differences between Christians and Muslims on this? And obviously, the, 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 question, the, the, the more important question is who's right, right? Yeah. Because this is one area where we obviously teach something very different. The Bible teaches that Jesus died by crucifixion. The Quran... And Shabir Ali is going to read it for us. Uh, the Quran maintains that Jesus did not die by crucifixion. So here's something where we believe something different, and we can actually test our religion to see which one is correct. Now, Shabir Ali's position is going to be, and we'll see in these clips, Shabir's position is going to be, ah, uh, but the Bible, the Bible doesn't really affirm the crucifixion. There's, there's, there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of doubt here. There's a lot of room for doubt here. And notice as you listen to Shabir, it, it seems as if he is supporting a view which says Jesus was, in fact, put on the cross and crucified. However, he did not die, so he wasn't technically crucified in his explanation of the definition of crucifixion, meaning to kill. So he kind of fudges here. 
on the one hand, he goes back and he, he admits that classical Islamic exposition on this text says that somebody else was made to look like him. But uh, Shabir actually seems to be purporting and pushing forth this idea, well, yeah, Jesus was on the cross, but hey, after all, he didn't get killed. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's take a look at that clip right now. Now, when it comes to the crucifixion itself, Muslim classical uh, uh, commentators on the Quran had said that uh, Jesus was not put on the cross, but somebody else was made to look like Jesus, and in that moment of confusion, that other person was put on the cross instead. There, there's that classical reference, and, and Brother David, we don't have to deal much with this, but, but we find that Shabir actually begins to sort of mitigate against that classical view in what he says later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no question. No yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. What, Once what, again, what, it's Shabir that, yeah. or Muhammad, Shabir or, or the first 1,400 years of Islamic uh, teachings and scholarship. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and wh wh why, that, why that's interesting yeah. is Shabir, Shabir's attitude is, yes, Muslim commentators, Muslim commentators yeah. Yeah. have said, uh, have interpreted this to mean that someone else was put on the cross. Mm. Well, guess what? That's, that's the first 10, I think. I think there's one possible exception which leaves it ambiguous. But of all of our earliest references, they all hold to some version of substitution theory. As right. far as our Muslim sources, the earliest 10 sources I can find, there's one that leaves it sort of, sort of open. Yeah. All the rest, very clear substitution theory. Jesus was not on the cross, according to earliest Islamic classical. Yeah, and, 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 and some of these guys are quoting Muhammad. Some yeah. of these guys, and and yeah. you, you, can, you can go to Ibn Kathir if you like one example. Go to Ibn Kathir, mm -hmm. look up Ibn Kathir's commentary on Surah 4, verse 157. You can find it online at Q Tafsir, the letter Q, QTafsir.com, look up the passage, uh, very clear substitution theory. Jesus goes to his followers, who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna, who's gonna go in my place? I will. Yeah. All right, you go then. Yeah. Um, so Shabir is going against centuries of Muslims. Shabir is basically going against 14 centuries of Muslims. This recent development where Muslims say uh, maybe Jesus was nailed to a cross, uh, but maybe he survived. That's a more recent development that comes out of the, the absolutely strong, airtight, scholarly uh, consensus that mm -hmm. Jesus died by crucifixion. Right? That, so, so they want to admit that Jesus, they want to get as close as they can right? yeah, while still yeah. maintaining their Islam. Right. And the, prob uh, the, the other problem that I think they're trying to deal with is, according to the old view, where did Christians get the idea that Jesus died on the cross? Allah deceives them. Allah deceived us, right? Yeah. Allah deceived yeah. us into believing that. So billions of Christians... And non-Christians who believed that Jesus died by crucifixion, we got that false belief from Allah himself. So last week we talked about the corruption of the gospel. Yeah. Muslims say the gospel has been corrupted because the gospel doesn't line up with Islam. Well, I open up my Bible, it says Jesus died by crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Who corrupted the gospel yeah. if Islam is true? Right. Who corrupted? Don't blame the Apostle Paul. <laughs> Don't blame the Council of Nicaea. Allah corrupted the message by deceiving people into believing that Jesus died on the, died on the cross. Even his disciples were killed for mm -hmm. believing a deception of Allah, if mm -hmm. that's the case. Yeah. So I think, I think Muslims like Shabir, deep down, are bothered by this. They want to yes. try and get away with it, yes. and get away from it. It's but but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help because they have to believe that Allah somehow miraculously preserved Jesus on the cross, <laughs> that he survived. And so it's, you still end up with, with God deceiving people into believing that Jesus died. Um, in other words, if Jesus didn't die, Allah really needed to clarify that. Allah knows. Right? I'm protecting Jesus on the cross. He's going to survive. Oh, wait a minute. Everyone's going to take this and, and start this largest false religion in history. And people are eventually going to reject Islam because it denies one of the most uh, obvious facts of history, that Jesus died by crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Allah, Allah would have known this and said, uh, hey, I, I, better not, I better not go through with this, it, it, especially when it's totally pointless, right? What, right. What's the point? Right. What's right. the point of it? In other words, I can imagine a situation where God would trick someone, for instance, right? Yeah. So suppose you and I are walking out of ABN and there's yeah. a gang of Muslims that are trying to kill us <laughs> um, because we, we said something about Muhammad or Allah or something that like this. true. And suppose God tricks them. Yeah, yeah. You quoted our book. You quoted our hadith. How dare you? You must die, right? Now suppose God tricks the Muslim group into believing we went one way when really we went a different way. He right? actually did this uh, through the angels in Sodom and Gomorrah, if you remember. He blinded those uh, wicked men so they couldn't go after Lot. You remember? So yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, 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 we can imagine situations where God yeah. would do this. The question is, why is he doing it, right? Right. The question is, why is he doing it? Yeah. And if there was some great outcome and, you know, he's, he's mm -hmm. tricking these, these unbelievers or something like that, right. okay, maybe, maybe yeah. I can see that. Yeah. In Islam, 
Allah is tricking people who follow Jesus, right? His followers, people who submitted to God's prophet. He's tricking them. And in the process, he's starting the largest false religion in history. And there's no reason to do it. What good comes out of it? What good comes out of it? Nothing good comes out of it. And so now you've got a God who tricks people for no reason, deceives people for no reason, starts false religions for no reason. Uh, the largest religion in the world, by the way, would yep. be a deception of Allah. Uh -huh. And you say, why? And well, that's just what Allah does. And once you introduce an all-powerful deceiver into your equation here, into your theology, how do you know what to believe? Well, right? he is Khair al-Makarena. Yeah. I guess at least that's consistent if he is, in yeah. fact, the greatest of all deceivers. Yeah. But then, of course, what's to say Islam is not a deception? Yeah, and, and, yeah exactly. And, that, and that's yeah. exactly the point. You Muslims, oh, we believe these things about Muhammad. Why do you believe those things about Muhammad? Oh, because, because God sent him and so, wait a minute, God sent Jesus and then deceived his followers. Yes. And then deceived his followers. <laughs> if you believe in a God who does that, how do you know you're safe? Right? Yeah. And, and the answer is you can't be. You can't be. Abu Bakr having one foot in heaven wouldn't have been enough for him. Yeah, that's, that's not us saying that. That's Abu Bakr <laughs> saying if he had one foot in paradise, he would still fear Allah's deception. And that's, that's in, in other words, if, uh, if Abu Bakr had one foot in paradise, he would still be worried. Allah is going to say, ha ha, tricked you and cast you into hell, right? You don't know with Allah. You don't know. And it, is this, how different is this from the God we believe in, right? Yeah, I mean, this absolutely. is horrible, horrible absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And, and I, and I want to say, this is blasphemous stuff. You're, yes. you're accusing God of being the worst deceiver in history, uh, someone who starts false religions, someone who, who just does it just because that's his nature to do these evil sorts of things. That's the God you believe in? Out of curiosity, Pastor Joseph, mm. who would the greatest of deceivers be according to the Bible? It might just be that wicked one known as Satan or the devil. Interesting. Yeah, father of lies. Interesting. Father, father of lies. lies. Father yeah, of lies. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right. Very interesting. All right, well, let's get to Shabir's argument. Let's see what his actual yeah. arguments are. All right, let's take a look at that next clip right now. Uh, Christians insist that based on the Gospels, uh, it must have been Jesus on the cross. And they think that uh, this is now a solid point of history, and they ask why should Muslims contend that what is known to be a historically proven uh, mm -hmm. uh, fact. Uh, well, it, whether it is historically proven or not, this is a separate question. But if one were to go to the Gospels and look at them carefully, right. one would realize that there is some doubt in the Gospels themselves as to whether Jesus actually died at the time when it was commonly believed that he died. Mm -hmm. You see, nobody checked his pulse. Nobody actually verified medi medis medically whether he was actually yeah. dead. They just presumed him to be dead. <laughs> well, you know. No one checked his pulse. <laughs> no <laughs> one hooked him up to an EG, EEG, <laughs> Pastor Joseph. If they had the red crescent, you know, out there with a the van that would have driven up in Jerusalem, then I guess he would have been more satisfied. I don't know. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> now, the... the <laughs> There, there are two points he makes, right? One, he says, well, well, well Christians seem to, to think that obviously since Jesus was crucified, he's going to die, and that, 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 that we believe this on the basis of some kind of evidence. And then he wants to say, but the Bible itself, the yeah. Bible itself is in doubt as to whether he died. <laughs> um, as, far as, as far as Christians believing that the evidence supports Jesus' death by cruci crucifixion, I want to point out that's not just us. Right? There are lots of things that non-Christians would disagree with us about, right? So, so, so a non-Christian is going to say Jesus didn't perform, I mean, uh, let's say an atheist is going to say <coughs> Jesus never performed miracles. Never happened. Uh, because miracles don't happen there, right. because there is no God. Or Jesus obviously can't be divine because there is nothing divine, right? So non-Christians, specifically atheists or naturalists, are going to disagree with us on certain things. Yeah. And so it's very interesting when virtually everyone agrees with us on something. Even the enemies, the, the Jews even said they crucified. Yeah. The Romans, the yeah. We, yeah, we have Jewish sources, we have Christian sources, and we have Roman sources, all supporting Jesus' death by crucifixion. And extra, both biblical and extra biblical, mm -hmm. outside the Bible. Yeah. And when you get down to our day, Critical scholars, mm -hmm. and I'm not even talking about Christian scholars. I'm talking about agnostic scholars and atheist scholars. Yeah. They not only say that Jesus' death by crucifixion, it, they don't just say, oh, probably, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Like Shabir said, oh, yeah, you, you might think it and you might not based on the sources. <laughs> they say that Jesus' death by crucifixion is one of the best established facts of history. Let me read you a few quotations just yeah. for those of you out there who uh, don't know who I am and might not have any reason to trust me right now. <clears throat> The atheist New Testament scholar, Gerd Ludemann, says, 
Jesus' death as a consequence of crucifixion is indisputable. Wait a minute, should be, uh, you know, uh, who this knows, who atheist. knows what the sort. Yes, is an atheist saying, hey, you Christians, I disagree with you on all kinds of things. Jesus never died, on, I mean, Jesus never rose from the dead. He never uh, performed any miracles. But when it comes to his crucifixion, that's indisputable. Mm. That's mm. indisputable. And we'll talk about why they said this in a moment. John Dominic Crossan of the Jesus Seminar. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't get any more liberal yeah. and out there than this. Yeah. Said that there is, quote, not the slightest doubt about the fact of Jesus' crucifixion under Pontius Pilate. There is not the slightest doubt. Wait, according to Shabir, the Bible's in doubt, right? We're in and, doubt. And these guys doubt everything else. They, everything th that, that can seminar, possibly be doubted. They, they even say that it's most likely that Jesus' body was, was exhumed by and eaten by dogs. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the crucifixion, even they don't fudge at all. They not the slightest bit. doubt. Yeah. In other words, we're not talking about 99% here. There is not the slightest mm. doubt. Mm. Uh, same guy, yeah. also uh, yeah. uh, John Dominic Crossan said, yeah. that he was crucified is as sure as anything historical can ever be. Mm -hmm. Right? Notice, I mean, we're, we're talking about, think about things that have happened in the, in the, in the 20th tough. century, wars and stuff like yeah. that. He says, yeah. this is as good as history gets. Ooh. With Jesus' death by crucifixion, it's yeah. as good as history gets. Very different from what Shabir is saying. And, and the reason that's disturbing is Shabir reads these guys. Shabir, well, that's probably why he's fudging, isn't it? And yeah. putting Jesus on the cross but not being killed. And, and what, what you notice with Shabir is that whenever these guys say something that he can twist to support his case, he'll use it in a heartbeat. He'll use yeah. it in a heartbeat. Sure. But then when they totally disagree with him, they say it, 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 they're not saying Islam is false, but when they say there's no doubt about Jesus' crucifixion. They're obviously saying Islam got it wrong. Right. Uh, right. Then who, who cares what any of these guys says? Who are they? Yeah. They're just a bunch of uh, atheists <laughs> and skeptics and blah, blah, blah. Right. Marcus Borg, doesn't get more, much more skeptical than that, states that Jesus' execution is, quote, the most certain fact about the historical Jesus. If we know anything about Jesus, we know that he was executed under Pontius Pilate. Mm. Uh, Jewish scholar Giza Vermes says, the passion of Jesus is part of history. Mm -hmm. So the passion is the entire series of events, uh, including, uh, leading up to and including Jesus' death by crucif uh, crucifixion. Right. Uh, according to Paula Fredrickson, the single most solid fact about Jesus' life is his death. He was executed by the Roman prefect Pilate on or around Passover in the manner Rome reserved, particularly for political insurrectionists, namely crucifixion. And since Muslims are so fond of Bart Ehrman nowadays, right? Yeah. Oh, Bart Ehrman says, Bart Ehrman says there are differences in the, in the, in the text of the, yeah. of the Bible, right? <laughs> right. Any Christian scholar, yeah. any Christian textual critic would say the, would say the same thing. Yeah, sure. um, uh, but since you Muslims are such fans of Bart Ehrman, why mm -hmm. don't you take his advice here and leave Islam? Because yeah. what's he going to say? Ehrman says, one of the most certain facts of history is that Jesus was crucified on orders of the Roman prefect of Judea, Pontius Pilate. Mm. Notice mm. what all of these guys are saying. They're yes. not saying, hey, he may have died, he may not have. Oh, yeah. We can't really tell from the Bible. Oh, it's just ambiguous. We can't tell any. That's not what they're saying at all. They're saying, not the slightest doubt. One of the most certain facts of history, as good as history gets. Those are the sorts of things they're saying. Right. And yet Shabir is telling his Muslim audience, who don't know anything about the history of, uh, of Jesus, who don't know anything about um, scholarly criticism. Shabir Ali is telling them, ah, oh, yeah, according to the Bible, there are all kinds of doubts about whether Jesus and, died. And that is a gross misrepresentation of what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's no doubt in any of the four Gospels. There's no doubt in the New Testament. It's prophesied in the Old Testament. All of the apostles except one were killed for their belief that Jesus died, died on the cross. Just wasn't mm -hmm. on the cross, but died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And if he's going to say Jesus was on the cross and didn't die, then they would have known that. Yeah. John was right in front of him mm -hmm. when he died on the cross. Yeah, and um, think about this for a second, right? Shabir's telling us, and we're, we're, we're going to see the passages that he goes to to show that there are these so-called doubts. But uh, think about this. Surah 1094. Yeah. What did it say? Surah 1094. Allah talking to Muhammad says, Muhammad, if you're in doubt, if you're in doubt about what we have revealed to you, ask those who read the book before you. Imagine I told you Muslims. Well, the Quran is affirming that Muhammad was in doubt. Therefore, there are doubts about Muhammad's <coughs> prophethood. Therefore, according to the Quran, we, just, we don't even know if Muhammad's being affirmed as a prophet. 
What, what, what would you say? What, the, the Muslim response would be, yes, Muhammad had a doubt there, but everywhere else in the Quran constantly affirms Muhammad as a prophet, right? In other words, hey, don't rip that out of the context of the rest of the Quran affirming that Muhammad is, in fact, a prophet and say that since there's this little doubt here, yeah. then, the, then the whole book is just in doubt, right? Because Shabir's going to do that. Shabir's right. going to say, Look, Pontius Pilate, he was surprised that Jesus was dead already. You see, the Bible is in doubt. The Bible isn't sure whether Jesus would die by crucifixion. And this is, I mean, again, if you apply the same method to Islam, then the Quran is, not, is, the, the Quran is in doubt about the, the prophet of Muhammad. And there's only one verse in the Quran, only one verse, singular verse. And talking about being in doubt, uh, of course, this is a singular second person uh, verb in there. If you're in doubt, Muhammad... But if other Muslims throughout history who doubted, and many have doubted about the crucifixion in Islam because of that only one verse, mm -hmm. it's obscure, the meaning. Mm -hmm. If they took the advice that Allah gave to Muhammad, they would go and read the Bible and say, oh, okay, now it's clear. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, and, he was and, crucified. And, when, and when, we say, when we say clear, think about these passages because Shabir ignores all of these. Yes. He just goes to a couple of verses that he rips completely out of context, and then he tells his Muslim listeners, this is, this is the Bible, this is why you can't, Bible's which, just, Bible just doesn't know, that's why you need to go to the Quran and get the right answer. Which even out of context is weaker than water. Yeah. Than proving. Yeah, and so let me read just a couple of passages here, uh, and, I'll, and I'll read them all from, from one gospel, right? You can find many more in the other gospels, all many more gospels. in the rest of the books of the, uh, of the New Testament, uh, the book of Acts, for instance, letters, and so on. But let me just read a couple of passages from, uh, from the book of Matthew here. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Is this in doubt? Uh, is this, is, is no. Jesus saying here, eh, I may, I, I'm going up to Jerusalem, I may die, I may not. I'm probably just going to you know, fall asleep, pass out on the cross, wake up later in the tomb. Uh, it's something like that, I don't really know. Is that what Jesus is saying? What's it say? And be killed and be raised on the third day. So he's very specific. He's going to be killed. He's going to be raised on the third day. Um, chapter 17, so very next, cha very next chapter, Jesus, uh, uh, we see something miraculous. And Jesus says in 17 verse 9, uh, well, the passage says, As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has risen, resurrection, from the dead. From the That's dead. Death. That means you've got to die first, mm -hmm. right? Not just be crucified. Yeah, just a couple of verses later, he says uh, that the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands, right? And notice what it says. Uh, let me back up a verse. Jesus says, Elijah is coming and will restore all things, but I say to you that Elijah already came. He's talking about John the Baptist. Uh, but I say to you that Elijah already came and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished, so also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Didn't they kill John? That's how these, yeah. They exactly. killed him and he says, the Son of Man, that's him, that's Jesus, is going to suffer in the same way. So yes. he's going to die, right? Yes. Uh, a few verses later, verse 22. And while they were gathering together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him and he will be raised on the third day. This goes on and on and on and on and on in the Gospels. Jesus saying over and over like a beating drum, I'm going up to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, and then I'm going to rise from the dead. And Shabir, uh, by, by, who knows what the Bible says, right? By the way, just so people understand, all of the Gospels attest to this, but David has specifically chosen Matthew because after all, uh, Shabir was pulling a reference out of context from specifically the book of Matthew when he spoke mm -hmm. about Pilate. Mm -hmm. So this is the same book that Shabir is, is so wrongfully and, and foolishly trying to use against the crucifixion, which not only will show in just a moment, but prophesies the crucifixion. Jesus is a false prophet, yep. if you can take it from that book. Yeah, let me read uh, two more quick passages from chapter 20. Just so, and again, still quoting the book of Matthew, right? Yeah, still we'll many more, many more in Mark, Luke, and John. Yes. Uh, this is, again, the book that Shabir says, well, the, the Bible's not the Bible. You can go either way on the Bible. You go either way because it's not really clear. Go on, whichever on what's way it's convenient right? as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chapter 20, beginning at verse 17. As Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside by themselves. And on the way, he said to them, behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. 
And the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and crucify him, and on the third day he will be raised up. And in the same chapter, verse 28, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And that ransom harkens back to the, uh, the, the goat that was given for Abraham's son. And the, even the Quran says this is a ransom. Well, what happened? The ransom had to be killed. Mm -hmm. So too, the ransom of Christ had to be killed. Now, my question is, how could Jesus make this any more clear? He says it over and over again. He tells his followers, I'm going up to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, then I'm going to rise. I'm going up, just want to make it clear, I'm going up to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, I'm going to rise. If that's not clear enough, keep in mind, I'm going up there, they're going to kill me, and after I've been killed, then I'm going to rise on the third day. In case you didn't understand it for the 50th time, I'm going up to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, and I'm going to rise. And Shabir looks at this and say, well, who knows what Jesus is saying in these passages. Pilate didn't know. Pilate was surprised that he died, so the Bible, the Bible just isn't, isn't clear. The reason what? they didn't break his leg is because he had died. And he uses that as one of the reasons that, well, maybe he didn't die, he didn't break his leg. I mean, it's just complete misrepresentation of what the text says. Read on the Gospel of Matthew. I mean, we don't have time in this show to read the, the, the description of the crucifixion, mm -hmm. the description of the death, the description of him personally giving up the ghost. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to take a break. Do you want to go ahead and take a break now? Yeah, we'll take a, let's take a break and we'll get to some of those other clips. All right, we're going to take see a break. See where Shabir's going with this. We're talking about Shabir Ali. Uh, Shabir should be ashamed. I'm ashamed of Shabir. I thought he was a better Muslim apologist than what he's showing on this program. Nevertheless, he's denying the crucifixion. He's weaseling his way out of it by saying, well, maybe Jesus was on the cross, but he didn't die. Just trying to maneuver so he can have a better argument. This is pitiful. Muslims, listen. Call your friends. Call your enemies. We'll be right back after a break to expose further this grand deception and to prove to you, Muslims and whoever's out there, Yes, indeed, Jesus did die on the cross. He died for your sins if you'll believe in him. And he raised the third day. Praise God forevermore. Let's take a break. So we'll be right back with more Jesus or Muhammad after this. Praise the Lord. Welcome back to Jesus or Muhammad. Here I am with David Wood. We're talking about Shabir Ali and his sad attempt to try to deny the crucifixion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother David, would you like to say something or we're going to go to the next clip? Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead to uh, the next clip and see. We're going to get into sh some of Shabir's evidence because yeah. he's maintaining there's evidence from the bible that the bible isn't really clear on jesus death by crucifixion even though jesus said over and over and over again like a beating drum I'm going up to jerusalem I'm going to die <laughs> well that's not the bible's final word on the issue in an amazing our previous show it just so happens was shabir telling us why we shouldn't trust the bible mm -hmm. and should trust the quran and now he's going to tell us why the crucifixion didn't happen and that we should trust the bible which cast doubt on it mm -hmm. let's take a look at that clip right now and when a request was made to Pilate, the Roman governor, for the body to be released from the cross so that he could be given a decent burial, Pilate marveled as to whether he had died so soon because usually crucifixion took a few days to right, kill a person. Right, right. And Jesus, by all accounts, was there on the cross only for a few hours. So probably he wasn't dead then. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, once again, Shabir Ali, uh, just like most Muslims, Pulls, not, he doesn't even quote, he doesn't even quote a part of the Bible. He pulls out an idea from Pilate that is in the Gospel of Matthew, which D David Wood has just been quoting, to try to cast doubt on what the Scriptures clearly say did happen, which Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and, and read what, what it says here. And I'll go, I'll yeah. go ahead and, and begin at, at, at verse 42. This is, math, this is Mark chapter 15. <coughs> Mark chapter 15. I'll begin at verse 42. We'll get the context here. Now, why didn't he read it like this? Go ahead. <laughs> this is the burial of Jesus. Chapter 40, I mean, chapter 15, verse 42 of Mark. When evening had already come, because it was the preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea came, a prominent member of the council, who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he gathered up courage and went in before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. So Jesus died. We've already seen that over and over again. Um, uh, in, in fact, just, just to go back a few verses, chapter 15, verse 37, and Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. Mm -hmm. gotcha. so Jesus died, right? Yes. Gave up the ghost, according yes. to the Bible. Yes. Gave up the ghost. 
So we get to just a few verses later, right after the Bible clearly says Jesus died, mm -hmm. Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate and says he asked for the body of Jesus. Why? Because if you're a crucifixion victim, Jesus seminar has it right. Yeah. right? After yeah. that, they would take your body down, let yeah. you be ripped apart by dogs. Let, who cares, right? Yeah. Uh, they don't care about your body. And best case scenario, they're going to throw you in some pit with a bunch of other dead bodies. It doesn't say they asked for Jesus. It says he asked for his body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, Joseph of Arimathea, and you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, if you cared about someone, you don't want them ripped apart by dogs or something right. like that, right? So you, right. you, want, to give, you want to give them a, 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 a burial. So Joseph asked for <coughs> the body of Jesus. And here's the verse Shabir is thinking of. Verse 44, Pilate wondered if he was dead by this time. And summoning the centurion, he questioned him as to whether he was already dead. Hmm. And ascertaining this from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Notice what it says, right? So Pilate wondered, because he, he, Shabir is right when he says some pe people could survive for several days. They, they right? were surprised that he died so yeah. early. Now, just to be clear, some people died just from the beating. They died during yeah. the beating. Right. They, didn't even, they, didn't, they weren't even alive at the crucifixion. They nailed their dead body up to the, up to the cross. Yeah. So there's a spectrum. There's right. a spectrum. Some people, right. died during, some people died immediately from the beating because your internal organs would be spilling out of you and mm. stuff. Mm. Some people lasted for a few days on the cross. Gotcha. And it, lots of it... Lots of it actually depend on how severely they would beat you. Mm -hmm. If you were someone they wanted to keep up there for a few days because they want you to be, to be uh, humiliated in this way for several days and to go through this much agony, they would actually give you a less severe beating. <coughs> right? If they wanted to speed up the process, they give you a horrible beating and then you're dead. You're, you're, they're putting you out of your misery. But the other two did die that day. We know yeah, they had noticed they had, to, they, yeah, they had to speed that one up. They had to yeah. speed that one up yeah. by, by breaking the legs. Yeah. Um, so Pilate, notice, notice all that happens here. All that happens here. They come in. Hey, Pilate, this guy would like Jesus' body because yeah. he, wants, he wants to bury it. Yeah. Pilate says, really? Is he dead already? Yeah. Go check. The guy comes back. Yep, he's dead. The centurion, which is a man over a hundred of Roman soldiers, mm -hmm. yeah. says, absolutely, I've mm -hmm. ascertained factually that he is in fact dead. And just so, just, just so viewers out there know how the process of crucifixion works, because, oh, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't take his pulse, right. right? They didn't check his pulse. Roman, Roman crucifixion. And this is why you'll never find anyone around anywhere near this time yeah. saying, maybe he survived, <laughs> like Shabir, right? The reason is these people were familiar with crucifixion. Right. They had seen it. They'd seen it with their own eyes, and that's why there's no doubt. They knew how crucifixion worked. Uh, just for, for, viewer, for viewers out there, you basically have three stages of crucifixion. You have the scourging, and it's not just, it's not just the whip like you might be familiar with. Um, this is called a flagrum. It's uh, strands of leather, and woven into the leather are chunks of bone and metal. Yeah. And so when they would beat you, and if, you, if you're interested in seeing this, watch The Passion of the Christ. They actually got that right. When they would hit you with the flagrum, those chunks of bone and metal would dig into your flesh, and then they would rip it, mm. and then they would rip it off. Mm. And they would keep doing this, and part of the purpose of this beating mm. was they didn't want you kicking and struggling while they were nailing you to a cross, yeah. right? You're going to be weakened from all the blood loss. Yeah. You're going to be weakened from the blood loss, and you're going to be wanting to get it over now, right? right. From, from all the agony you're in. Anyway, they would beat you across the front. They would beat you across the back. We have records of people's uh, their skin and their muscles hanging from their backs. Mm. We have records mm. of people's intestines spilling out. They, be, they, they, they were beaten so severely across their stomach that their guts spilled out. Mm. That's, this is just part one, ladies and gentlemen. This is just mm. part one. After that, they would put you on the cross. They would nail you to a cross. And the idea is, and you could practice this on some monkey bars if you ever want to. Mm. If you hang long enough in this position, uh, for a while, you can hold yourself up, right? Your muscles, your muscles can sustain you for a while. Much more difficult if you've just gone through Roman scourging. But if you're hanging for, for, in this position for a while, uh, eventually these muscles give out, and you're just hanging. And what happens is your chest capacity, once your muscles have given out, your chest capacity is, is fully extended. And you can't exhale, right? You have to go <sighs> to exhale, right? You can't do that. Your muscles have already given out. And so your lungs are full, and you can't, you can't exhale to get a fresh breath. Mm. Breathing becomes extremely difficult. And that's the reason they put the nail through your ankles, mm. or they would tie the bottom of your feet, right? They did that so you could actually, when you're gasping for breath, you could push yourself up mm. to get some fresh air. Mm. Now, the thing is, 
uh, you can do that for a while, right? Yeah. And they've tested people where they've, where they've had some, some young, fit, 22, 23-year-olds mm -hmm. hold themselves up in a position. They didn't actually crucify them, but they put their feet in a little slot yeah. and said, push yourself up in a, weird, in a weird position, kind of hold yourself there. After 11, 12 minutes, if you're in really good shape, you see their legs trembling, right? Mm -hmm. and, and eventually, yeah. they just can't do it anymore, and they hang back down, yeah. right? Now, the next time they have to go up for air, you can't hold yourself up for as long. Right. You hold yourself up a little, you know, if you right. went 12 minutes the first time, maybe you go 10 minutes the next time. Next time you go maybe nine minutes and stuff. Yeah. And so this is why this was the most horrible practice the Romans could think of. The Romans are trying to set an example to yeah. people who are going to challenge them. Right. The example is, if, if you mess with us, this is what's going to happen to you. Now, do you want this to happen to you? No, because it's the most horrifying thing you mm. can imagine. Mm. Mm. And so... Through this, during this crucifixion practice, basically, you'd have some guys would push themselves up, they catch their breath until their, their legs can't hold them up anymore, and then they go back down. Yeah. And then they start running out of air. Mm -hmm. And they, they stay down here until, they're, until they, 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 they can't breathe, yeah. right? And then they push themselves up on their legs, and they hold themselves up as long as they can breathing. Mm -hmm. And then they can't do it anymore, their legs give out, they drop back down. And they go back and forth. And again, some people did make yeah. it for days, depending on how severe the beating was. But that's just step two. Mm. Step three, once the Romans knew that you were dead, yeah. they practiced a death blow. Yeah. They practiced a death blow. We have records of them setting people on fire, oh. of them taking people down and feeding them to animals, of crushing people's skulls, oh. and of driving spears through their hearts. Right. And basically, once they knew you were dead, and they could tell you're dead, you're not pushing yourself up anymore. Once you're, you're there, you're hanging, you've been hanging for 15 minutes, they can be pretty sure you're dead. They see you hanging for 30 <laughs> minutes, you haven't come up for air, they, you haven't breathed in 30 minutes. They know you're dead. I don't care if you check your pulse or not. Yeah, but, but even, David, they didn't crush Jesus' soul, skull, and they didn't burn his body. What are you trying to say? What did they do, Pastor Joseph? Well, I, you're supposed to tell us. <laughs> Here's what you have. The Romans practiced a death, bro, death blow. The death blow could be different, right? But one way or another, they were going to make sure the person was dead. And what do we have in the Gospel of John? They put the spear right into his heart. Why are they putting the spear right into his heart? Because that's part of crucifixion. At the end, once they already know you're dead, then they either crush your skull or feed you to <coughs> animals or set you on fire or put a spear through your heart, just to be sure. This is after they know you're dead. This is after they know you're dead. So Shabir says, oh, they didn't... They didn't check his pulse. Well, guess what? The Romans didn't check pulses on any of the crucifixion victims. Is Shabir saying all those crucifixion maybe they, maybe they all survived? Really? Uh, after you've been set on fire? After you've endured crucifixion? So think about how ridiculous this is. Jesus has been through the beating. Jesus tells his followers he's going up to Jerusalem, he's going to die. Then we're told he actually died. Then someone wants the body. And he finds out, yes, Jesus was dead. We put a spear right through his heart. Mm. Is there any doubt that Jesus is dead? Yep. Shabir says, Pilate was wondering if he was dead. Why didn't he read any of this other stuff from the Bible? Why didn't he read John Because chapter then 19? his Muslim followers might start thinking, wait a minute, maybe I need to look at this very, very carefully. And he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. He wants them to say, oh, Pilate... Pilate Pilate didn't know? Oh, yeah, there you have it. I, I agree with Shabir. The Bible just isn't clear on this. And that's this why. is sheer deception. This is ex the, Muslims, you need to understand. Shabir Ali, your, your poster boy for Muslim apologetics, he is deceiving you. This is clear that he is deceiving. If he wants to give a good reasoned argument, why didn't he read what David Wood read, read to you? Why didn't he read John chapter 19 that says in verse 32, Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who were crucified with him but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead mm -hmm. then they did not break his legs and he even uses breaking the legs as one of the reasons listen to what it says but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out mm -hmm. and John the apostle of Jesus who wrote this gospel says and guess what I have seen it with my own eyes. Folks, Muhammad didn't see that. Shabir Ali didn't see that. John the Apostle saw it firsthand witness. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and uh, we're, we're actually going to get to that in a moment because he's going to make something. He's going to make an argument out of those, uh, out of the, out of the broken legs. Completely twisting yeah. the text. Yeah. So oh, we have, we have, we have a couple more clips. Uh, these, the these will all be tonight. short because we've been through it. We've been through all, we've been through all the evidence and so on. So uh, let's let's go ahead and look at our next clip, and we'll see. Keep in mind what Shabir said. Right? The Bible isn't. The Bible isn't clear. We read you what. Did we just say, oh, the Bible's clear? No, we quoted passage after <coughs> passage after passage. We quoted even non-Christian scholars saying it's indisputable. Jesus' death is indisputable. And Shabir is maintaining the Bible is in doubt. There's plenty of room for doubt here. So let's see. We've, we've already seen his argument so far. Haven't uh, established anything except for uh, he's apparently trying to keep his Muslim viewers very, very ignorant. Um, but let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and see if he's got anywhere else to go. Let's look at the next clip. Let's look at that clip right now. So the Quran is basically saying, uh, as for their boast that they killed Jesus, son of Mary, ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu wa lakin shubbiha lahum. Uh, they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it appeared to them. Uh, uh, Abdul Majid Daribadi in his Tafsir al-Quran explains the word crucifixion as meaning to kill a person by means of crucifixion. It's not just the crucifixion itself, but right, it's right. An, a method of execution. So as a method of ex execution, it failed on that occasion. To me, this is what the Quran is saying. They killed him not, and in case they were thinking, but wait a minute, we crucified him. The Quran is saying, well, you didn't even do that, did you? Because if you look back at the records, you will see that there was some doubt. Did you notice something? The Quran, the four, sort of 4157, he quotes, says, they did not, uh, la salabu or la katilu. They did not crucify him, nor did they kill him. But you notice what he's trying to say is, well, actually, they did crucify him, but they didn't kill him. And he goes to some Muslim scholar to, to, to defend himself, say, oh, but this Muslim scholar says, well, crucifixion doesn't really mean crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Crucifixion only means crucifixion when they're actually killed. Yeah. But the Quran makes a distinction yeah. between, you know, crucifixion. They say he wasn't crucified, nor was he killed. Yeah, nor, yeah, no, yeah, no, th it says, and it, it, it specifically says, they did not kill him, nor did they crucify nor did him. They crucify so wait a minute. Obviously, if, if cruci nor did they crucify him means they didn't kill him by crucifixion, then according to Shabir Ali, what, it, what the Quran is saying, they didn't kill him, nor did they kill him by crucifixion. <laughs> Obviously, if they didn't kill him, they didn't kill him by crucifixion, right? <laughs> well, so what? The, the perfectly clear, perfectly eloquent Quran is just being redundant here? It's like, it's like, it's like me saying to you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, suppose I, you know, someone was accused of stabbing someone to death, right? And I said... Uh, no, he didn't kill him, nor did he stab him to death. <laughs> obviously, 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 if you didn't kill him, you didn't s kill him with a knife. Well, Shabir say that they did crucify him, but they didn't kill him. The Quran, I believe, is saying they didn't crucify him, nor did they kill him. Yeah, and, and, and th I'd say that's obvious, right? Yeah. And that's the way all the early Muslim commentators Shabir interpreted it. Shabir or Muhammad. That's the way Ibn Abbas think. interpreted it. That's why Ibn Kathir interpreted it. That's why everyone interpreted it. It's yeah. when you get now, down to the 20th century yeah. and 21st century when yeah. Muslims start making this silly claim about Jesus surviving crucifixion. Actually, you go back to the, 19, the <laughs> 1900s where it actually comes from. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, who started the Ahmadis. He's oh, the, really? He's the Muslim who, yeah, he's the Muslim who started spreading the, uh, this idea that Jesus didn't Swoon die. Theory on, yeah, jumped. Jesus uh, didn't die um, by crucifixion. But, I mean, I mean wow, what, what, what is going on here? This show should be entitled Shabir or Muhammad. Which one are you going to mm -hmm. choose, right? Yeah, I mean, so, um, so the Quran is maintaining yeah. that Jesus wasn't killed. And he wasn't killed he by was, crucifixion. Yeah. If you just read that, notice, notice at best case scenario, best case scenario, the Quran is unclear here, right? That's right. Because was Jesus put on the cross or not? As a Muslim, you have to say the Quran is so unclear here, even our Muslim scholars were deceived by this. Even centuries <coughs> of Muslim commentators were deceived by this. Even mm -hmm. Muhammad and his own companions were deceived by this because they all thought it meant Jesus mm -hmm. was substituted right. by someone yeah. else. And why? Why else would this be a problem? Well, notice how the Bible uses crucifixion, right? The Bible can also mean, and the Bible can also mean killed him by crucifying or just nailing him to a cross, right? Mm -hmm. So notice Jesus is still alive in chapter 27, verse 35, when it says, And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. And Jesus is still talking after this. So he's still alive, but he's already been crucified. Why? What's crucified mean? Crucified here means nailed into a cross. Right. So which one does the Quran mean? Well, the Quran doesn't tell us. The Quran doesn't even tell us. It just says he wasn't crucified. Which one does it mean? And the reason I find that important is because just a few, ver in the same passage, it makes fun of Christians and Jews for not having certainty. Yeah. 
You're, you're Muslim scholars. You're top Muslim apologists can't even agree on, 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 what, on what the Quran means here. And you're making turn around and make fun of us and say we don't have certainty when even the most, even the most critical scholars in the world say we have certainty on this matter. And there's other verses in the Quran that mitigate against this understanding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 In, in matter of fact, let me read this verse and Please. go ahead and go yeah. ahead and, uh, yeah. and and read to them from um, so from Surah three. There, yeah. um, the angel said, "This is Matthew mm -hmm. chapter twenty-eight, verse five. The women come to the tomb. Uh, verse five. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. Mm -hmm. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. So notice what he said. Mm -hmm. The angel says." Remember when Jesus said over and over again that he's going to die and that he's yeah. going to rise from the dead? Yeah. And then remember, he was crucified mm -hmm. and nailed to the cross and he was dead and he put a spear through his heart? Remember that? And now you're showing up here and he's gone? Yeah, that's because he rose from the dead, just like he said he was going to do. That very Shabir, next phrase, David says, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from mm -hmm. the dead. And... Shabir says, well, the Bible's not clear here. But think about this. If the Bible's not clear when it says, when Jesus says he's going up to Jerusalem to die, and then it says he dies, and then an angel comes along and says, oh, he died. But the Bible's not clear because, you know, Pontius Pilate was surprised he was dead already. <laughs> then would Muslims also have the same problem? Would Muslims yeah. also have the same problem? Yeah. I, what, what do you have? What do you well, have well I mean, I just say this. It's, it's almost like uh, Sh poor Shabir has got to run to the Bible because the Quran certainly doesn't give him enough proof. Uh, let's just take Surah al Maryam real quickly. Surah, Surah al Maryam, okay. Surah, Surah 9, 19, verse 33. Uh, it says, uh, And peace, this is supposed to be Jesus speaking, and peace upon me on the day I was born, the day I die, and on the day I am raised to life. And so Jesus says, and remember this, verse 34 says, Such is Isa, son of Miriam. Okay, this is talking about Jesus. So once again, verse 33, listen to the order very carefully. Jesus says, he says, Wa al salam alayya yom, uh, yom al walid, wa yom al maut, wa yom uh, 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 a This last word uh, talking about raised to live. Peace be upon me the day I was born, number one. The day that I die, number two, and the day that I'm raised to life, number three. Hey, that's the gospel. Jesus was born, God in the flesh. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. And on the third day, he rose again. They got the order right. But what Shabir is telling us, and what modern day apologists are telling us, that the Quran is saying, that no, Jesus was born, and <laughs> then he didn't die at all. Mm -hmm. But, but Allah raised him to himself. But sometime, according to the Hadith, sometime a long time from now, he's going to come back and live and get married and have children. Oh, and then he'll die. But that contradicts the clear order of the words of Jesus himself. Yeah. And the reason this is a perfect example yeah. is suppose you, you opened up to yeah. that verse. Yeah. Jesus is saying, Peace be born, going to die, going to be raised. Right? Yep. You would look at that and say, oh, so Jesus is going to die, and then he's going to be raised. Right, right. right. Now, if you bring this up to a Muslim, what does the Muslim do? He reconciles the passage. He says, no, 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 no. You can't rip that verse out of the context oh, of the rest of the Quran. Okay. And if we go to Surah 4, verse 157, it says very clearly that Jesus didn't die. And so the, he reconciles him and says, so what this must mean mm -hmm. is that, yes, Jesus wasn't crucified and he ascended, but he's going to return at his second coming, and then he's going to die, and then he's going to be raised. So what do they do? They harmonize they harmonize the passages to say, and here's what this passage must mean. Even though that verse, Surah 19, yeah. verse 33, is not clear by itself, what do they do? They harmonize. But notice, what do Muslims do with the Bible? Hmm. Shabir Ali goes to, oh, Pilate, Pilate was surprised that he's dead already. That means that the, the Bible's saying maybe he wasn't dead. Really, Shabir? What do you do? What do you, again, what do you do with, what do you do with the Quran? If the Quran is, is unclear on a verse, you look at the other verses which are clear. Here, what, what does it mean to say Pilate was surprised? How is that saying Jesus didn't die? Pilate wasn't even there while Je when Jesus died. That's why, he did, that's why he doesn't know. And even in the same passage it says, and Pilate wanted it confirmed. And then he found out it was confirmed. And you combine this with Jesus saying he's going to die, with the angel coming along afterwards saying, yeah, he's dead. And 
Well, why do you not apply the same method? Why do you not apply, why do you apply totally different standards? Why do you say, if it's the Quran, we have to harmonize the passage of the Bible, we can rip anything we want out of context, totally ignore everything else the Bible says. But we have uh, uh, two more clips in only a couple minutes. Let's try and get to them real quick. Let's take the next clip right now, and we'll get that reference for you in a moment. Let's take the next clip right now. This explains why in Matthew's Gospel it says that the Jews uh, who wanted him dead it came back the next day, which was the day of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Because the crucifixion occurred on the Friday, they said, and then the Sabbath is the Saturday. The Jews came back and they went to Pilate and they said, well, wait a minute, seal up the tomb. Uh, lest the, the, the disciples will come steal his body away and then they will proclaim that he resurrected from the dead and then the second deception would be greater than the first. What did they think was the first deception? You see, they left the scene on Friday thinking that Jesus would be dead. Right. They had requested that the legs of the uh, crucified victims be broken. But only the other two victims had their legs broken and Jesus' legs were spared. So what, what was the purpose of breaking the legs? One theory is that by breaking the legs you hasten death. Right, right. So the Jews left the scene thinking that his legs would be broken, he would be done for. They heard later on that his legs weren't broken and now they're saying, well wait a minute, seal up the tomb because he, the next thing you know he'll come out of the tomb alive and then they will say that he resurrected from the dead. Right. So, so the last deception is worse than the first. Now there, there, yeah. there are two things here. Yeah. Um, Shabir points out that Jesus' legs weren't broken mm -hmm. and the legs of the others were, right? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that um, that uh, the Jewish leaders came to Pilate and talked about this deception and so on, right? Right. And let's make this make sure this next deception isn't worse than the first, right? Right. Right. And so the first deception, what? That Jesus died. Right? It's that was a deception, deception, right? Deception. Now let's let's just look at both of these passages, and you Muslims out there, think about this. Think think about what your greatest apologists do with Scripture. Um, let's start reading at chapter 19, verse 31 of the Gospel of John. Then the Jews, because it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other who was crucified with him. But coming to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Shabir leaves that part out and says, oh, they didn't break Jesus' legs. Why? Oh, see, you see that? He I wonder why he left that out. Mm -hmm. now, and, and let's read the next verse that Shabir doesn't quote. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Th that means he ruptured the pericardium that surrounds the heart. So notice what Shabir does. Oh, see, they broke their legs, and you break the legs to hasten death. They didn't break Jesus' legs, therefore they're not, therefore they're not hastening the death, therefore he didn't die. And leaves out the part where the entire reason they don't break his legs is because he was already dead. Since he was already dead, there's no reason to hasten his death. That's right. That's exactly right. And then they did the death blow anyway where they pierce your heart. We don't need to break your legs when you're already dead. We're just going to shove a spear through your heart. It's undeniable. And you see that? Oh, the Bible's in doubt here. Now let's go to the, let's go to the other passage. Yeah. <clears throat> and again... Again, notice this, is, and you're right, this is flat-out deception. Yeah. Shabir's read these passages. He knows his followers haven't, and, and so he quotes them and deliberately agree. misrepresents yeah. the text. Um, so, Matthew chapter 27, we'll begin at verse uh, 62. Now, on the next day, the day after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate and, and said, Sir, we remember that when he was still alive, that deceiver said, so who's the deceiver here? Mm. Jesus is the Supposedly. deceiver. Yeah. yeah. So they're calling Jesus the deceiver. Why? Right. Because he convinced people that he's the Messiah and yeah. so on and, and yeah. that, that he's, the, you know, he, he, he's all these things, right? Mm -hmm. He's a deceiver. Notice. So the deception they're referring to with the first deception is Jesus deceiving people about who he is. Yes. So, um, that deceiver said, after three days I am going to rise again. Therefore give orders for the grave to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise the disciples may come and steal him away and say to the people, he has risen from the dead and the last deception will be worse than the first. Right. So, and Shabir takes this and says, oh, the last deception, what's the first deception? 
Maybe it's Jesus dying by crucifixion. That go. was all deception. Really? <laughs> Jesus deceived them into dying by, die, that he was dying by crucifixion? No, according to Islam, Allah yeah. deceived them. And guess what? If Jesus didn't die on the cross, Jesus was a deceiver because he told his followers over and over again that he's going to die by crucifixion. And then the angel's a deceiver too. He comes along afterwards. Hey, Jesus died. Notice, even the passage, Shabir, oh, the Bible's in doubt here. The Bible's in doubt. And we go to the actual passage that he says, here's where my evidence is. Here's where my evidence is. It says there was a first deception. They say what they tell you what the first deception is. It's Jesus talking about himself, and right. he's a deceiver. Right. That's right. why they wanted him crucified, because he was deceiving people, according to them, right? Who's the deceiver? And Satan so they want to make Shabir sure. Ali. Yeah. Shabir and Ali. So they want to make sure, they want to make sure that he doesn't get this second deception in by his disciples stealing the body. And Shabir looks at that and says, oh, yeah, um, Jesus might not have died. Brother David, we're out of time, but the verse for our viewers that we referred to earlier is Surah 355. And talk about uh, confusion, talk about deception, Surah 355. And when Allah said, O Isa, I am going to terminate the period of your stay on earth <laughs> and cause you to ascend unto me. Actually, the word there is Tawafikana. Tawafikana, which is, I am going to kill you. I'm going to cause you to die and raise you to myself. Here again is the order. Who's confused about this? Why does Shabir go to the Bible? Because the Quran's confused about it. Who's deceiving? Allah's deceiving. Shabir Ali's deceiving. And Muslims, if you believe this junk, you're deceived too. It's time to come to the foot of the cross. The cross did happen. Jesus did die for you. Jesus or Muhammad, the answer is clear. It is Jesus Christ and Him alone. This is Jesus or Muhammad. We'll be back with you next week. Until then, God bless and good night.